Ukrainian compares and all the good people from all over the world. We're going to turn it over to you, Juan. Are you ready, buddy? We lost Juan. <laughs> I thought we were turning it over back. to Juan. <laughs> Where did Juan go? We'll have to go Not back sure. to the song. This is my fight song. <laughs> And where is our friend Juan? He's he coming back to Buddy us, the Frog right now. Yay, yeah, it's I'm Buddy. Here, I'm here. Okay, we got worried about you. Wow. Did you have, buddy, did you have to go to the bathroom? Is that what happened? No, we don't know what happened. Okay, well, we're going to turn it over to yeah, you. We we're no very idea, happy to have you here today for Effective. Give us the title exactly Effective Learning is Effective. With Buddy and yeah, Ronnie. effective Great learning title. is truly effective. Truly effective. It's we'll be in the background if you need any help, Juan. We'll Love go over it. to your classroom now. Here we go. Press the magic button. There we All are. All right. Okay. Have a great presentation. I think we got to the last slide somehow. There we go. Okay. We'll okay. See all right. We'll be back. Enjoy yourself, Juan. All right. And everyone. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm very, very happy to be here with uh, all of you. Uh, I'm talking to you from Istanbul. It's very hot here. It's 32 degrees. And it's hot, hot, hot. This is Buddy the Frog, and Buddy the Frog is going to be um, with us during this. Uh, next hour. Um, I'd like first to uh, uh, thank everybody for uh, being here. Um, we have 16 participants in the room and uh, I'd like to welcome you all by uh, saying uh, your names. We have Adi, we have Anna, Anastasia, Ayat, Bob, Diva, Divya, Josette, Judy, Juliana, Julie, Mid, Mokefi, Stavka, no, Slavka, sorry. Um, we have Simonella from Brazil, Tatiana, and Victor. Let's see who else is here. Virginia and Vivian. Welcome, everybody. Um, what time is it in the country? Uh, where you are right now. It's 11.06 a.m. here in Istanbul. I, I know that uh, Chuck is saying here it's 5 p.m. In, um, in Japan, 5 a.m. in Brazil. Thank you so much for waking up early. Wow! Are you still wearing your pajamas? Buddy, don't talk about that. Wow. So thank you so much for, for being here, for making the, the effort to, to be here. And um, I'd like to, to thank uh, ITDI for inviting me to, to be here, uh, sharing my work, sharing my, my passion. And uh, ITDI, what a learning community. Many of my uh, friends today belong to ITDI. I've been traveling around the world visiting these friends and uh, what a learning community and what a fantastic purpose, which is bringing professional development to teachers all over the world. So much generosity. And uh, I'd like to, to, to repeat some words that Josette has written about ITDI. Uh, it's a space in which we have passion, curiosity, love, in which all teachers and their voices are celebrated and honored. And um, while I was uh, thinking, preparing my, my presentation, I just came to uh, the conclusion that this is effective learning. This is pure effective learning. And so ITDI is a place for effective professional learning. So uh, I feel among friends, I feel very happy to, to be here. Uh, right now, just uh, uh, feel as if you're at home. 
more than that, better than that. Feel that you are on this beach here, this beautiful beach. Uh, just take off your shoes, take off your sandals, make yourself comfortable. So the idea is for us to have a very, very uh, informal, relaxing and um, welcoming uh, environment for our talk. May I sleep too? No, you may not, buddy. You're gonna help me. Okay. Buddy. All right, so here, um, I'd like to start by sharing with you a childhood fantasy that I had. You can see here uh, Playmobil. I loved playing with uh, Playmobil. And uh, um, I even had this spaceship. And uh, as a child, playing with my Playmobil, uh, I had lots of creative and complex uh, dialogues of what each uh, character would say to the other, the, the, the problems they had, how one had to be rescued. But I didn't want that only to be uh, in Portuguese, because I was brought up in Brazil, but I wanted that to be in English. My childhood fantasy was having somebody who would come to my house sit on the floor and teach me how to say these inner dialogues. I wanted somebody to play with me in English. And uh, this brings me to what uh, uh, Bernard Dufault talks about, which is like having the teacher as a server, as somebody who helps students say what they want to say in the foreign language. So um, this was my childhood fantasy. Uh, it didn't happen how I wanted it to, to happen. But many years later, like mm, 20 years later, a, a little bit less than 20 years, I was invited to teach English to a boy. And to my surprise, he um, asked me, uh, his mother asked me to play with him in English. And when I got to his house, he had lots of Playmobil. So uh, this uh, is what uh, effective uh, learning is all about. I'm going to be talking about it, about sharing experiences, using language to talk about yourselves, to talk about our dreams, to talk about who we really are in the foreign language. Here you have uh, Buddy the Frog. Um, yeah. I, I have Buddy because uh, when I was a child, my uh, parents used to travel with me to the beach and there they would stop the car on this muddy road at night and inside the car we stayed, uh, my sister, my mom, my dad and me, just listening to the frogs. My dad would roll down the windows and we stayed there listening to frogs. And for me, frogs mean sharing, family, curiosity, transformation. And in some cultures, they say that frogs mean good luck. And I think that effective language learning is about all these things. You know, like fe feeling comfortable, um, talking about your memories. This is something that um, really makes uh, sense to me. Uh, uh, here I'm reading what people have uh, uh, written. Uh, good that you uh, completely agree, Virginia. Uh, Jason, uh, how nice that your your daughter is a Playmobil uh, nut. Um, teacher is sharing, definitely. So uh, we want our students to be confident. We want our students to be spontaneous. We want our students to use language as a true means of communication. So the best way for this to happen is to have this environment in the classroom. So uh, then it will happen when they're outside the classroom in, in their uh, real lives. Today I'm going to be sharing some uh, postures and practice that foster this uh, uh, environment, an effective and effective uh, language learning environment. Here I have my roots. Uh, after uh, I started teaching that uh, uh, four-year-old, um, I started teaching his neighbor and then his, uh, his sister, his cousin. And after some time, uh, I quit engineering. Uh, 
uh, I was on the fourth uh, year at that time, started studying education and uh, with my sister here, you can see my sister, uh, Soso, who's a fantastic uh, educator and a storyteller. We came up uh, with uh, our language school. Uh, it's in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we have been teaching children effectively uh, for the last 20 years. We had our 20th uh, anniversary uh, this year and here I'm very happy. And I'm there, I'm there in the picture too. Yeah, uh, you're all very uh, uh, welcome to visit my school anytime you're uh, in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. Uh, some of you might know that I have been traveling around the world um, telling stories. Um, I have a show for, for students and uh, conducting teacher training. Here you can see that uh, I'm telling a Kamishibai story to one-year-olds in Japan. Yes, they were very, very young. Yeah, I'm, I'm here telling uh, a story uh, with, with Buddy uh, to a group of 300 children. Yes, 300. Uh, when, when my friend uh, Mark Kulik invited me, uh, I didn't ask him how many children there would be there. I thought maybe 60, maybe 70. And then he told me, oh, 300. I said, oh, oh. Okay, let's do it. And uh, here, uh, uh, the, the last picture is a picture I took with uh, uh, Algerian teachers that uh, I had the pleasure uh, to be with them, uh, sharing and learning about uh, effective um, language learning. Um, we, I see that here we have Mikaela, we have Faten. Welcome. Welcome. This is my, my, I'll tell you a secret. This is my very first webinar. Same here. And. Uh, I really like it. I really like it. So let's go for it. Uh, uh, you you probably want to to get uh, lots of ideas uh, for the classroom, don't you? So here we have this uh, button. I love English. I would like every student and every teacher to have this this button. You know. Uh, not the actual button, but to have this feeling that they love English, that they feel comfortable, that, you know, that when they have to talk in English, they're filled with positive emotions, with this feeling that they're confident, that they can, and that speaking English is part of themselves. So the, uh, my idea is uh, some people think, oh, Effective language learning is that because the teacher, uh, the student likes the teacher very much? Is it because activities are fun? Is it because students are praised? Well, not really. It's much more than that. It's when students feel that English is part of them, that when they're when they speak in English, that they're heard, they're validated, that um, they they own the the language and uh, the the connection is not only between the teacher and the student but most importantly between the the student the learner and the language and uh, I'm very happy to to be here uh, sharing how this uh, can be done uh, there is a quote that I like very very much that says um, students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I think this is very, very powerful because um, the, when you establish this connection of trust, respect, validation, you're able really to connect with your student as a person, with, with this person that has dreams, with this person that has fears, with this person that wants to have a voice in how he or she is learning the the language, and um, yeah, I'm, I feel very validated. Juan listens to me. Yes, and uh, we're going to be talking about many things that might even seem obvious, such as listening, looking. Um, but you know, sometimes the the most obvious things are the hardest. Yeah. They're so easy. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, buddy. And um, 
Are you ready to continue? Yeah. All right. So, um, very important thing. Uh, the very first thing, greeting. Yeah. Um, when your students come, I mean, take time to really look into their eyes, to say their names. I once heard that the sweetest music to our ears is the sound of our own name. So, greet them. Uh, make sure that during this time, uh, you're not doing anything else. You're not uh, separating photocopies. You're not getting uh, a game ready. Just be there. Just welcome when they enter. Um, look in their eyes, say their names, and then you're gonna see that magically, they will tell you things, or even if they don't, they will just sit down with that feeling of, wow, this is different. This is a place in which um, I, I feel different. I feel, I feel seen, I feel uh, heard, I'm going to, to feel um, heard. So uh, greeting with, uh, with our uh, souls is something very, very important. Um, you can also greet students with a song. Uh, I remember uh, teaching here in Turkey. I had Algerian students. And then one day I greeted them with uh, Algerian music. They, they were so, so happy. And it surely makes a difference. And then you can create uh, a very productive and a very welcoming mood. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, how do you welcome your students? Do you have a special way to welcome your students? Please, right here in the chat box. Yeah, Jason says here, we remember the teachers who do this. Yes, I mean, of course we do. Yeah, and this is something that uh, sadly doesn't happen in every place we go. Yes, I completely agree, Judy. Students should definitely feel connected. Yes, with your brightest smile, Vivian. Yes, so nice to see you. I'm glad you're here. I remember an African uh, greeting, which uh, you say basically, I see you. And then the other person replies with, I see you too. So uh, uh, it's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Circle time, Juliana. We're going to be talking about circle time. Soul to soul and not roll to roll. I love that, uh, Josette. Really the idea of connecting first as people, not living the persona of the teacher and the student. So being able to be yourself, to be spontaneous. Yes, Virginia, uh, it's so important for us to say how we feel. I have moments in which I'm with the students and uh, we're doing something and I'm very excited. I just tell them that I'm very, very excited, making sense of what that means. Yes, remembering all the students, not only the students that are there, but also remembering the students that are not there. Then we have a part in which we share the plan. We talk about what's going to happen. Uh, with young learners, you can have cards with the activities. Uh, with older students, you can write the activities on the board. So uh, I think this is a respectful post posture because we tell students what is going to happen. So it's not a mystery. Oh, to, now we have this and then we have that by, by doing that students know what's going to happen they get ready for these activities and you also can can talk about the activities you can make choices what comes first what comes second and by the end of the class these this sequence is very important for you to recall what has happened and how they have felt during their their uh learning one thing that's very important uh, for young children, sometimes they get anxious that they don't know if the class is going to finish. So then it gives them like a, a clear order of how the class is happening. Circle time. Uh, here we, we have, uh, Juliana uh, has mentioned uh, uh, about circle time. 
And circle time is a very good moment because uh, students can talk about themselves. They, they can talk about what is happening in, in their lives. If they are sad or if they're happy. And uh, by, by paying close attention to what students are saying during circle time, you can use these ideas in your uh, activities, making them very uh, relevant and fostering authentic uh, communication. What I really like about circle time is really the, the idea of having everybody in a circle to have this cohesion that we're, we're all here together. During circle time, we can also talk about uh, learning, we can talk about uh, positive uh, postures, you can praise, you can really set the tone of uh, how it's going to happen. Circle time usually lasts like five minutes, sometimes a little bit less. You don't have to have it every day, but I would say that before, uh, uh, right after a weekend, it's a good moment to have them talking about what they would like to talk. Otherwise, you're going to be talking about these things anyway during, during your class. Yes, it's a share moment, circle time, definitely. And one thing that I do, uh, I always like to, to write a quote on the board. Uh, sometimes I talk about this quote, sometimes I don't. But it's something for students to think about. Yes. And then um, after uh, some days, I, I ask them about the quotes, if they remember any of them, if they would like to comment. But, you know, it's also something special, something that is there uh, for them uh, to show that, uh, that I care. Yeah. So far, how are we doing? I'm going to, to have a sip of water. It's good water, eh? Yeah, I love it. Okay. Wow, we are 24 people now. Yes, we have lots of new people who have joined. We have Sherry from India. We have uh, Indri from Indonesia. Let's see who else do we have here. We have... Oh, so many people. Yeah. Oh, we have Fatin. Hi, Fatin. Good to see you. We have Anna as well. Oh. Uh, welcoming uh, people who are who are late, it's all, always very important. And just just make sure you're happy, you're positive that that they're there. The the more the merrier. Yes. Good. So one very important part is uh, building the mood, having a warm up. A warm up uh, is an activity that is like lasts between three uh to five minutes and um why do we have warm-ups buddy oh oh hey people everybody please help me help me why we have warm-ups uh oh buddy mm. let's see if people can help you with with warm-ups yeah some students may be tired in the morning yeah thank you joseph yeah so th that's a good way to to raise the energy to call their attention yes sometimes students arrive and they're thinking about other things so then you put everybody together yeah Ooh. yeah and then you can have uh, warm-ups in the class as well, when you're when you're changing activities to build report and cohesion. Yeah, it's it's like a gym class. Yes, it's like a gym class. You know, if you enter in a gym class like ten minutes late, you're gonna get hurt. And you know that our students can also get emotionally hurt, or let's say linguistically hurt. So a warm up is always a good thing to have. Yeah. Yeah, together, fun, easy. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Yeah, to, to help with transitions. And uh, here, th there's one, one secret I'm going to share. What is it? Here, and I'm going to, 
to get them, yeah? Okay, you find them. Okay, here they are. Ding ding. These are my clackers. I use them whenever I want to get students' attention. It's a very effective and effective way of getting students' attention. By, by using some kind of uh, musical uh, instrument, you're able to get students back without having to shout, everybody, everybody, I'm here. And um, the nice thing is that you just once or twice, and then you, you have uh, all of your students paying attention to you. Uh, one thing that I usually do, I give the clackers to some students, and then they just love when, when they're, they're given the clackers, and then they can call everybody's attention. The very nice thing is that they usually play their own rhythm, uh, and then uh, everybody enjoys uh, seeing the, the, their, uh, their friend being validated. It's just so much fun. Also adult students, yeah. It's always hard to, to call students' attention, yeah? Yeah, much better than whistles and bells, yeah. Th there's another way that I, that I really love, which goes like this. You, you, you just say quietly, if you can listen to me, clap. If you can listen to me, clap. And then uh, suddenly you have like three, five, eight, and then you have the whole classroom uh, paying attention to you. Th that works even with 100, 200 students. Maximizing success with instructions. Uh, this is very, very important. Um, if instructions are not well given, students get confused and they think that they're not good in English. They're not good at English. So um, by giving instructions one at a time, demonstrating, um, asking uh, instruction checking questions, you're making sure that everybody's set to to go to perform well so uh, giving proper instructions is very very uh, important to make classes not only effective but also uh, effective and uh, whenever you give instructions that are not well given you can stop this is what i do i just stop and say everybody i'm sorry my instructions were were not good so by showing that sometimes you make mistakes, you allow them to make mistakes uh, as well. We, we're all learners. More than that, uh, there's a very beautiful quote by uh, Alicia Fernandez. She says that you, uh, the stu students only learn when the teacher learns. So uh, just remember that. Fostering expression. Um, the use of mother tongue, okay? We've come to a controversial uh, theme. Um, I let students use their mother tongue in the beginning. Why? Um, I understand their mother tongue. And uh, uh, what I usually do, I help them to say what they want to say in the foreign language, in English. Um, depending the setting where you are, that's not possible. I remember uh, last year when um, I took my self extension for uh, young learners, I, I taught a group of Turkish children and I don't speak Turkish. So it was very hard for me to, uh, to help them with the language they, they had at the moment. But uh, if you have students that you share a language with, let them speak uh, in the beginning uh, in their language. So by doing this, uh, you're establishing uh, uh, genuine, authentic communication. You allow them to, to, to say how they feel. You allow them to, to really sta establish uh, uh, a connection that makes sense. Let's say you're with, with an adult student and the student is new. For example, I'm, I'm learning Japanese. It's really hard for me to... to uh, carry out a conversation in Japanese. My Japanese is very, very basic. And I want to tell things to my teacher. Uh, young learners certainly want to share a lot. So by allowing students to, to speak, you, you help them, you give them the language that is relevant uh, to them. You uh, 
uh, you do what uh, Bernard Dufault says. Uh, he says that the the traditional teacher responds. Uh, the traditional, sorry, the traditional teacher demands a response from students, and the humanistic teacher responds to a demand. So the demand is what students want to to tell us. So I, I do this rephrasing, this recasting of what they they tell me uh, in in uh, in their native language, and uh, and I invite them to say these things whenever I notice it's appropriate in English. So it's also important to respect student silent period, the the time in which they're. Um, they, they they still do not feel ready. They they want to really um, to to start speaking English, saying things that really have to do with themselves. You're helping them to to find their their inner voices. So I, I think that's very very important. Um, Jason here the uh, like the quote: "The humanistic teacher responds to a demand." Yeah. Feel free to uh, ask me any questions, uh, comments. Yes. Uh, please tell me how you think I'm doing here in the in the chat box. Uh, I'm still getting used to this to this format. Uh, it's, it's my very first webinar. Um, thank you for being here with me. Um, all right. Uh, how how do you see mother tongue in your in your class? Is this something that you're? I mean, I'm not telling you. To, to use the mother tongue, but to allow students in the beginning to use their mother tongue and for you to transition uh, to the target language slowly in a, in a process that builds uh, confidence and spontaneity. Storytelling. Storytelling is wonderful. Storytelling is beautiful. We are all uh, storytellers. And um, I think that uh, much more important than telling stories is the talks that we have after we, we tell a story. When students say, oh, I would like to do this different, or I really like this part. Um, because when students are commenting about the, the stories, they're, they're talking about themselves. They're talking about their values. They're talking about who they really are. And um, when we mix their life together with language, we, we give birth to a language that is alive. And when students are talking to each other about uh, who they are, we're able to have like very, very good uh, attention. We have very strong. Uh, eye contact, and uh, we are using language to really express who we are in the world. So this is very, very beautiful. This is very, very uh, powerful. So uh, whichever story you choose, make sure that you have time to talk about the stories, to reenact the parts that they have enjoyed the most, to change the stories. Stories are much more than just a moment to present language and ask uh, comprehension uh, questions. Um, storytelling connects us who we are uh, and has been doing this for since humanity uh, started. Yeah, I love listening to stories. And I remember the stories for a very, very long time. Yeah, J Judy says something very interesting here about uh, 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 using uh, the the mother tongue. The thing is that sometimes uh, you have classes classrooms with students with many different uh, languages, and then there's no way how you can uh, you can do that. But you can sometimes ask students, "How do you say this in your uh, language?" So then you show that you're interested in their language uh, and that you're also uh, a learner. Um, well, if I can see you later, then uh, uh, happy that you've you've made it. Fantasizing, and this has to do with puppets. Yeah, puppets.
puppets are so nice. Yes, puppets are really great because they allow students to say things that they usually don't. Because, you know, during your everyday life, you're not a frog. And also, you know, if, if the puppet makes a mistake, it's not the student, it's the puppet. So it's a great way for students to uh, also express their creativity by making voices, bringing pauses. Um, it's, it's really a way in which we can have holistic uh, expression. And uh, um, even uh, some people might think, oh, with adults, I don't know if puppets are going to work out. I tell you, uh, give them a try. Uh, uh, tell your students that Puppets can be very interesting. Have an activity and then and then uh, talk talk to them uh, afterwards how it was. Um, everybody likes playing, and puppets uh, are a great way for for everybody to play. One thing I tell you: beware. Puppets can be addictive. I started with one, and today at school we have over two hundred puppets. Mm, Maria says here that she had a student that only talked in class through the elephant puppet, yeah? Wow, I, I wonder what, what your student said, uh, Maria. And, and the thing with puppets is that you can uh, film, you can send it to parents, you don't have to worry about the, the, the identity of the student being filmed. and. Uh, Parents uh, and students get so, so proud of the work of what they have uh, achieved. This is very nice also to, to, puppets are very nice for you to have plays and to share them with um, other classes. Yeah. I love this picture here. When I saw it, I went, wow. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't even know how to call it. I would say like th this is the validation stamp, yeah, to say you're fine, you're okay, I accept you as you are, yeah. So by uh, greeting our students, by listening to them, by giving them time to talk about what they would like to talk, by uh, making comments to what they're uh, they're saying, by remember by remembering what what they they talked about in class and by preparing an activity that connects uh, itself to to their interests. I think this is so, so important. Uh, that it really comes to that quote of like real, uh, students uh, care, showing students you care and then students will will care about who you are and, and what you know and what you're there. It makes such a big difference. Uh, 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 discipline uh, problems diminish. Uh, I think this is so beautiful. If I would have to choose just one picture, one slide, uh, this would be it. Yeah, Judy says here, always let your students know that wherever they are, it's okay. We're here to learn. We're, we're all together. Then uh, it comes to living language, and I put here, it's time to talk. Um, I think it's very important for us to plan time for us to talk, to talk about what comes up. Uh, let's say you can call this like a moment for uh, dogma, dogma teaching during the class, a moment in which uh, students can really use what they have uh, learned and can really put it uh, uh, into practice. Uh, uh, some of my most uh, precious moments have arise from these moments in which they started talking to each other, uh, uh, genuinely, genuinely talking, using language to express uh, who they are. Uh, uh, I, I apologize if I'm being redundant, but uh, I think this is very, very important. It's important for us to to remember that uh, being there in, in the classroom is not about our teaching, it's not about what we have planned, but it's, it's about students learning. It's about that moment that you notice that communication is happening and you just let it flow. And uh, um, when it stops, 
just just tell students just just tell them wow this is beautiful uh, uh, have you noticed how you use this language how how structures were used and also to comment say wow i really liked what what you you mentioned here yes judy says here they need to be there for each other yes uh, we're together in this it's not that the uh, 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 I, I like to have students like in, in circle in, in a horseshoe like that in a way that they can see each other and I'm just a facilitator there. Um, whether your students are children or adults, it's important to play. It's important to play with language. It's important to play with the fact that uh, we're learning. Uh, playing allows us to take risks. Playing allows allows us to be creative, to come up with something that is new, that uh, uh, in the end we're all, we're all going to be uh, proud of. Uh, and I tell you, it's not a, a thing of like, okay, we have a moment in which we're serious and we have a moment in which we're playing. No, it's not about that. It's about doing what we are doing, but in a, in a playful way. So by doing this, we, uh, we make activities much more enjoyable and also much more memorable. And this is very, very important. And you might be thinking, oh, but how am I going to make everything in a playful way? Uh, it's use your, use your creativity, bring, bring a puppet, bring a ball, bring uh, flying handkerchiefs. I have flying handkerchiefs that I, that I love. Here I have one of them. Yeah. So I have flying uh, handkerchiefs. And ask students. They will give you lots of uh, ideas of uh, how activities can, can happen. Uh, Victor says, yes, the, the inner child is innate. I think it's important for us uh, to allow our inner child to come to the classroom and invite the inner child of, of our uh, students. And when language meets the inner child, wow, the, the result is just, is just beautiful. I just, have, I just have had this insight right now. Thank you, uh, Victor. Uh, Judy says, playing drops the effective filter and allow the adult to relax and learn. Definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, adults have such busy lives and uh, they're going to thank you uh, for uh, having a moment in which they can play. But um, make sure you have a moment in which you can reflect about it, not only um, saying, oh, we're going to play. Ask them about it because uh, uh, nobody likes to be patronized. Just show them why you think it's important and after just talk how did it go did you like it did you think it was it was a good idea and uh and ask them how how they felt this is very very important how they felt when they were writing how they felt when were they were talking and uh because uh we don't know what's going to happen during play that the level of attention is also much much higher Yes, uh, Michaela says, playfulness means being able to explore and to do things. When the teacher is having fun with the lesson, the students are having fun as well. Yeah. Uh, pr uh, Indri says, students learn best through play. Yes, teachers should be entertaining. Yeah, I think, in, in a way, uh, it, it helps uh, to, to get the, the, the attention. Uh, as long as we maintain the, the, our aims very, very clear. Making decisions together, yeah? Um, even if you have a, a very fixed uh, syllabus, you can ask students, uh, how are we going to do this? Are we going to have, uh, are we gonna use puppets? Are we going to make a game? Uh, what are your um, suggestions? Uh, is there a part that we, you can do at home? You can try flip learning. Um, you, when they're having uh, homework, you can give them like three or four suggestions by making choices together with students, you uh, you allow them to to be the protagonists of their own learning. And by doing this, once they make decisions together with you, they're going to be much more committed and engaged in their uh, uh, in their decisions and in their own process of learning. Let's not uh, have an environment in which you know, students are, come to the classroom and then learning happens to them. Yeah, 
So uh, by doing that, we, we, we build uh, awareness, we build reflection, uh, we, we can establish the initiative that we want for students to be genuine, genuinely engaged. And sometimes their decisions will lead you to paths that w have never been thread. But that's fine. That's also great for us as teachers that we're able to learn together with our students. Um, we have this, this very beautiful picture of this uh, Colombian, of Colombian chess pieces here. And um, I took a course, and this course said that in discipline can be understood in a different way. In discipline can be understood as uh, students telling us about unmet needs. So whenever a student is telling, is, is misbehaving, the student is telling us, here, I have an unmet need. Uh, I have a need that hasn't been uh, fulfilled. And by doing this, we're able really to see the indiscipline um, issue as not being a, a tug of war, as not only what I would like to happen and what you would like to happen, but noticing that our students might lack movement, they might lack choice, they might lack power, they might lack um, voice. And by doing this, we're able to, to understand it better and to do things before the, the indiscipline problem arises. Uh, when we use reactive strategies to uh, indiscipline, we're usually uh, punishing, we might be punishing a student who has an unmet need. And this unmet need usually brings suffering. So we would be punishing a student who's already suffering. So, uh, and then we're not solving the problem, yeah? So let's say our students uh, would like to move more, they need uh, to move, and we're telling them, if you move a lot, if you stand up, uh, your name is going to go to the board. This, this doesn't solve the problem. So the best thing is for us to uh, think about strategically Think about it uh, in a moment that we're not fulfilled with those uh, panic emotions of uh, what am I going to do with these students? Just calm down, write down what you think the possible causes are. And uh, by uh, taking care of these needs, you, you might be able to um, uh, dis dismantle the indiscipline uh, issue. I know I could be talking about it for uh, a whole session, but the paying attention to how you handle indiscipline uh, can make the class much more effective and also um, effective. I wrote uh, a blog post uh, about it. The wrap up, this is a very, very uh, important part. We, we always talk about the warm up, but many times we forget about the wrap up or we don't include it in the, in the planning uh, of our classes, the wrap-up is a good moment for you to praise, for you to recall, for you to talk about what's happening next, and to talk about things that you noticed during the class, but then you preferred not to interrupt and to talk uh, about them. It's a moment in which students can also talk about how they uh, have seen the class and talk about the activities that that have been presented uh, in the beginning with the cards. It's also a very important moment to reflect, to talk about feelings that can happen individually, that can happen as a group, but you know, like really to make sense of why are we here? How is it going? A moment to, to really uh, make decisions together about how the process is going to be happening. Um, one thing that I read some time ago that was, was beautiful is that uh, learning doesn't happen because of experience. Learning happens when we reflect on our experiences, when we really have the time to stop and make sense of what we're going through, of what has happened. Um, here, um, I'm reading here the, the comments. Uh, thank you, uh, Mikala. You said here that effective learning 
happens when uh, it's the place where the teacher meets students' needs. Um, very curious about how teachers are able to tap into underlying needs. Yeah, this is a, a very interesting uh, point. You have like to try different things. Sometimes the needs are not uh, so clear. Uh, I agree, Maria. There's no point uh, uh, yelling to a child. Um, um, I can have a webinar talking about a, a proactive discipline management in the future and, and let uh, all of you uh, know. Um, John Dewey, uh, a favorite quote of mine. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I didn't know that was John Dewey. Thank you for telling me, Josette. So I think that this dialogue is very, very important, yeah? Uh, it's, not only, it's not about my teaching, about uh, your learning uh, and students' learning. I have five more minutes. Um, listening to, to feedback, uh, showing them that we're, we're also learning, that uh, it's not about how I teach, but it's about how together we, we learn. Uh, by being vulnerable, we... we uh, allow them to be vulnerable as well and to communicate uh, their fears and uh, by establish uh, trust. Trust is the most important thing, that the bond is uh, through, through it, uh, uh, learning uh, happens. So I say listening uh, and also returning. When I say returning, it's like telling them how you see their learning. Sometimes, you know, when you're involved in something, you're not really able to to notice our own progress, but uh, by having notes saying in the beginning we were doing this, now we're doing this. Um, hey guys, you're doing great. Uh, I feel very very happy to be here, and uh, and and then you can ask them, do you no do you notice what I've been telling you? Does it make sense? Uh, so then, really, students, uh, it's I'm coming back to to, to the very same point of like dialoguing having a dialogue with students about their own processes. This is so important. And then when they give you some kind of feedback, uh, make sure that you're able to, to work on it the next class already. So then they, they can really notice that you value their feedback and that you're open to change. If they give you feedback and then, well, it takes five, six classes until you act uh, on it, probably the next time they're not going to uh, give it as eagerly to you. Recalling and energizing, and here we have celebrating with this beautiful uh, picture. If, if uh, language learning is like climbing a mountain, uh, if, if you're all the time looking up and saying, oh, we have like five more days or 10 more days of climbing, uh, that, that can be, uh, well, that can bring not a very nice feeling, but if you stop and you say, wow, let's rest here, let's admire the view, uh, Wow, isn't it great that we're already up here, that we, we can uh, uh, rely on each other? Uh, thank you for that moment in which it was hard and that you have helped me. Thank you um, uh, for your suggestions. You know, it's a moment in which you're celebrating, making sense of it, and building uh, a community. It's a moment also in which you re-energize ourselves to continue uh, climbing. I remember this, this student, that the teacher, the, the friend of mine, that she received one day all her uh, young learners with glasses full of juice, and then they had a toast. Probably they, they had never had a situation in which they would toast uh, at school. Uh, so uh, make sure you stop and you have moments planned to celebrate with uh, your students. Uh, how do you celebrate with your students in your settings, in your countries? I'm curious to know about it. I'll have some water. I, I really loved uh, how we celebrated uh, being here together in the beginning. Yes, with that music. It was fun. I loved it. Yeah. Sorry, but I didn't participate, but I was listening to everybody. Yeah, Buddy has been here all the time. 
Yeah, by watching Jason's videos and dancing with a snack, songs, yes, having a moment in which you can share a meal uh, is really, really nice. I, I love sharing meals with, with students. And then uh, coming to uh, our closure, I have here effective learning in one picture. I took this picture uh, last year when I was in Iran. I was in Isfahan. And uh, I, I say that this was my National Geographic moment. I was able to get these two boys uh, riding their bikes across this majestic fountain in, uh, uh, in this. This is the, the Komaini uh, Square in uh, Isfahan. And uh, why would you say that, uh, why would you say I chose this picture as an analogy to effective language learning? Just write a word, why it comes to your mind. I have many words, but I'd like to listen to you. It was such a beautiful day. There's beauty, total presence in the moment. Oh, like a movie cartoon with snacks at the end of the term, fluidity. Uh, learning is a celebration in itself. Light, enlightenment. I really like to think of the daring thing. It's like they're breaking rules, yeah? And this is going to be memorable for them. They're probably going to say, do you remember that day that we crossed the, the fountain? It's very memorable to me, who just watched. And I'm here sharing it with you. Many needs are being met, yes. Play, relief. And it's fun. Oh my God. It must be so much fun riding. Uh, I, would, I would like to, well, once they would get to the end, I would say, oh, please give me your bike. I want to do it. Yeah. A challenge, a story in the making. Yeah. So uh, here, that was my alarm. So I'd like to invite all of you to visit my blog. Uh, I have lots of uh, articles that uh, I post uh, there uh, on effective language learning. Uh, I'm also writing, uh, uh, I have many posts also on ITDI's um, uh, website. I also have collections uh, of interesting things uh, in my Pinterest uh, account. I have uh, lots of effective pictures you can use in classes, the quotes. Um, wow, there are over 5,000 posts for you to have uh, fun there. Um, there is a video, a very nice video that uh, I'd like you I'd like uh, to invite you to watch. It's called 100 Ways to uh, Show Students You Care. So um, here uh, is the link. And uh, showing gratitude. Uh, I once read that uh, showing gratitude is one of the most effective and certainly effective ways to bring happiness. So. Uh, Thank everybody who has been in your path. Thank your students. Thank uh, your fellow teachers. Thank your parents. And here, I'd like to thank uh, all of you. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, I'd like to thank all of you for having taken the time to be here. And uh, um, to take this time, I know that some of you are coming from uh, have uh, are are connecting from uh, places in which it's very very early or very late at night. Thank you so much uh, for being here and uh, get ready because this was just a preview of uh, all the the great uh, sessions with uh, very uh, creative and very effective and effective speakers that uh, are sharing, uh, generously sharing their knowledge here uh, at the Summer Intensive for Teachers that uh, is uh, brought by ITDI and Gallery Languages. So thank you so much for being here. Um, it's been a pleasure. I can't hey, believe it was, was this our webinar, first buddy. webinar, and it was fun. <laughs> I just can't believe it. That yes, was fabulous. Buddy. What I a wonderful kickoff to, to the... Again. 
ITDI yeah. Gallery Teachers Summer Intensive for Teachers. This is just the best. Wow. Just wow. And thank you, everyone, for <laughs> all over the world for, for being here. I hope you'll come back wow. tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that and the day after that because we've got great stuff coming up. You can see the whole schedule there over on, on the right. Tomorrow we've got Scott Thornberry live from New York City. And he's going to be at 2 p.m. GMT, I believe. And then after that, we got Barbara Hassan Sakamoto, who is in the room. Barbara Hassan Sakamoto is in the room. Alexander Kistakova, all the way from Russia. And Barbie Pujitas coming from Hungary. And then the list just goes on, and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And so we wrap things up on the last day so with enormous, uh, Vicky Loris. Enormous thanks to Chuck Sandy and everyone at ITDI uh, for putting together this. And gallery this languages. Amazing, this, and gallery languages uh, for putting together this, this amazing lineup here. Just This is still kind of a secret, but uh, Juan is working on a brand new column. What's the title of your column, Juan? I can't remember at the moment for gallery teachers. Playing to learn, was that or is buddy? But <laughs> playing to learn is a brand new column on uh, the soon to be relaunched yes, gallerypeachers.com. And coming that's in, coming, coming in soon. September. It's coming, coming in September, we're gonna have you're gonna see some amazing content writers on gallerypeachers.com. That's right. September first, if you go to the gallerypeachers.com. Link you'll as I did it's earlier. September first, right? Thirty-one days <laughs> until the, the launch of that. It's a great collaboration between ITDI and Gallery Teachers. And Giovanni has been here, Mr. Gallery Teachers himself, in, in the room. Thank you very much, Giovanni. And uh, we hope you all come back. <laughs>